Hey there everyone, Taish here back again with another video and before we proceed the video on the kernel, let me remind you this is our Linux series that we are posting up on YouTube. So in case you are watching this as a very first video, I highly recommend to check out the previous video as well. Now before we proceed on to the video itself where I talk about kernel and show you all of the things about kernel, I would like to ask you a question and would ask uh, would like to put this question in this way. So let me know in the comment section if whenever I say what is kernel, the automatically a definition uh, keeps on ringing in your head that says a kernel is a application interface which provides you interface between hardware and the operating system. If that's the case, let me know in the comment section that you are also uh, have heard about this very popular definition. Absolutely correct, but now we're gonna change this a little bit because we are watching the series. So whenever next time you uh, somebody asks you what is a kernel, uh, just keep this definition in the mind that kernel is just a program, nothing more than that. Yes, definition is technically correct that it provides an interface, but it has a lot more job than just providing the interface between the hardware and the software or the operating system. So next time, whenever we talk about the kernel, we're going to say that kernel is nothing more than just a program. Although when I say nothing more than, a lot of people might get offended because it's a very, very popular uh, kind of a biggest open source project that anybody has seen so far. So in order to understand more, we're going to visit a couple of links and we are going to talk about that in a minute. So first and foremost, the official uh, GitHub uh, repo by the man itself, Linux. And here you can see all the source code and everything about the kernel itself and entire thing which loads up into your memory is actually available here. But this is not a good place to just dive deep into that. In fact, there is a documentation folder, but I would like to point you to a greater resource which will help you to understand the kernel in a little bit more manner. So this is the official website kernel.org uh, slash doc slash html slash latest. So visit this website and here you're going to find out a lot more about the kernel. So we can see that the kernel release, uh, what is the latest version of the kernel that is available right now. And apart from that, a whole lot of things are explained up here that where it can be used, how it is being used. Whenever somebody says that Linux is present in your modem, in your IoT devices, in your LEDs, this is what they are talking about. They are not talking about the kernel like Ubuntu or CentOS or Arc. They are not talking about that. They are talking about the core foundation of the Linux, which is the kernel itself. This kernel is further being modified and being used onto its use case scenario. Uh, for example, and whatever you want to do, it's available here. In, uh, in fact, if you want to do some customization into the CPU load or EFI boot uh, stub, whatever you want to do, it's available up here, including memory management, security module, usage, Thunderbolt, it's, it looks like a gigantic and anybody who looks at the documentation says that kernel might be really, really big program or big file. But don't worry, I'm going to show you where kernel is and what's its actual size is and you can also find it out in a minute. And if you look at here uh, on the left hand side, we can see that we have a whole lot of things going on, including the power RPC, the architecture. So whatever you want to do, USB support. So all these things are available in the kernel. So yes, the fundamental job of kernel, providing an interface, is also available. But where can I read more about this interface? So whenever I say it provides you a programming interface, means it provides you an API that can help you to connect with all the hardwares. So we go up here, and if we just scroll a little bit, you're going to see the kernel API. This is the API responsible for providing all the drivers as well as interaction with the hardware. And uh, there we go, he can, we can see that uh, the driver model, the basics of the drivers, and how this is going on for the industrial I.O., sound devices, and all of these things. Now, before we click on the sound devices, I'm going to point out one more thing here. A lot of time you might have seen that Linux is totally written in the C, and it's technically correct, but not 100%. So let me show you that. When I click on the sound devices up here, you can see that it, uh, the way and how the module is structured to give you all these things. But also in the description section, you can notice there is something known as send underscore print K. So if this is entirely purely a C, where does this command comes up? I have never seen that in the C programs itself. Now this print K statement comes into uh, a lot of Linux drivers and modules. Whenever you are going to interact with them, you're going to see this a lot. This is a proof that uh, the C language that is being used in the kernel, it's not a purely C, it's a hybrid mixture of the assembly language as well as C programming. So yes, it is being used, uh, but it's not in the purest form that you see right now. It's a little bit different than that. 
Okay, quite a, quite a lot of stuff that I've talked on to this kernel. Uh, let's go ahead and move back. So let's talk about this kernel. We have talked a little bit. So let's move on to the actual definition and talk about what is kernel. A kernel is just a program which bootloaders loads into your memory, which performs a variety of tasks and nothing more than that. And one of that task is providing an application interface to interact with the hardware and interact with the drivers. But there are a lot more things that a kernel does and I have categorized six of them. Definitely there are more of them. But the first one is providing all the system calls. The second one is handling the VFS, which is virtual file system. So in case you are aware about the things like uh, proc and all of these, what are the processes running into your system? Kernel actually handles that as well. Uh, don't worry if you don't know that. We are going to talk about that later on in the series. If we're going to comment down in the section that continue Linux. So definitely we're going to talk about that. Another thing is device files. Uh, a lot of time, some devices are plugged in into your system, maybe your keyboard, maybe your mouse. So these device files actually first interact with the Linux and then it allows us that uh, what functionality should I provide there, what driver should I load up on based on that. Apart from that, a kernel also handles the privileges. The Linux, the core foundation of Linux is handling variety of privileges. You are not directly allowed to install any program, whatever you wish to. Sometimes you need uh, extended privileges like root user. Uh, that is all managed by kernel itself that what are you allowed to see, what you are not allowed to see. I'm, I'm going to show you that uh, in a minute once we move on to the system itself. And uh, one important thing about the kernel is it's very, very modular means the actual size of the kernel is very small. The main file which is loaded up by your bootloader and, and just to give you a sidebar here, bootloaders are of variety of types. Uh, it's not just about the grub that is the bootloader. There are a variety of others as well. Grub is there, grub2 is there, uh, Lifo, Lilo is there, Linux loader. A uh, lot of new ones are coming up based on the hardware that you're using. So it's highly dependent on that. It's not about that you're using the latest laptop and it is using some of these latest tech. So that is going to be the only bootloader. Some of them are popular, some of them are not. Like for example, I'm pretty sure most of you are not aware about the Lilo kind of uh, bootloaders. Uh, so yeah, that makes sense. So as I was saying, the Linux itself bootloader, the kernel is very modular. Uh, the main file which is being loaded in the memory is very small. And then it calls on to a variety of things, drivers and interface which it requires on the go. Apart from that, the last but not the least, it provides you an application interface to talk with your hardware. That is also definitely the job of a kernel. Now let's go ahead and talk about the kernel itself. So I'm going to go up here and if I can just, there we go. So I'm logged in with a user. Uh, there we go. Uh, the username is YouTube, of course, what else it can be. And uh, we're going to just open up a terminal. So let me right click and open up and it doesn't matter what operating system you're using. You can use uh, Ubuntu for this particular video. You can use CentOS, whatever you like. I'm going to just zoom it a little bit. Bear with me. So now that our screen is all set and all zoomed up, now we're going to go into one directory. The directory is CD space and then provide a slash and then write a boot. In this boot directory, most of the booting information is present. So we're going to do a quick LS here. And we can see that we have a couple of grub files here, grub and grub2, pretty easily visible. And at the very end of it, we have this vm, linuz, and then some big gigantic number there. This big gigantic number and this green file is actually your bootloader. So the next question comes up is, uh, what is the size of this file? Obviously, you might be curious for that. So I'm going to just simply do ls dash l space dash l. And it gives me a whole lot of information. My screen is just filled up. You don't need to worry about that. The only thing you should look at is this big number, 66 something. So it's a file which is just of six megabytes or something like that, a little bit give or take. But this clearly proves that it's not at all a really big file. The number is pretty gigantic, but around six or seven MB this file size is. And this proves the point that yes, it's not a gigantic file. The kernel is pretty small, but very modular. And one important thing, please do not delete this file. If you're going to delete this file, the current session which you are running on the system is going to be absolutely fine. But when you're going to restart your system, it's going to it's going to face a crash. So there we go. Now, another interesting stuff that we can do is we can use a command that says uname and we can provide a variety of options with that. Like, for example, I can provide the option of hyphen R and it gives me the exact version of the 
kernel that is being currently used. You might have seen this version while booting up the CentOS as well. And apart from that, we can also provide get mode information by providing the option of uname a dash a. And it gives you a whole lot of information about GNU Linux and time and date and Linux version, a whole lot of stuff. But the big question that arises here is that how I was able to figure out that uname hyphen r gives this one and uname hyphen a gives this one. So in order to understand that, we need to first discuss that how we can find more information about these commands, what are the default structure of this command, and a whole bunch of other things. So that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed this one as well. I'm pretty sure uh, you're gonna love this series as well. In case you haven't yet subscribed, please go ahead, do subscribe. It gave me motivation to make more videos. So that's it for this one and let's catch up in the next one.